Today, my report is devoted to some general issues of tumor evasion from immunosurveillance because today, and I hope you are going to speak a lot about that, uh, a lot is said about checkpoints and specific therapies so as to counter and augment the immune response. So I would like to say in general what we can, what do we know today about these strategies and what we can use. As you know, the key function of immune system is genetic stability and uh, elimination of non-self antigens and ability to destroy tumor cells. Of course, immune system, it means protection, protection from viruses. We all know that some tumors like papilloma, Steinbar virus, usually cause tumors. So destruction of these viruses increases increases uh, survival. Timely elimination of pathogens and prevention of inflammatory processes as early as early times, we know it well, augmented uh, tumor development. And of course, this is immunological immunosurveillance and tumor elimination. As you know, today, interaction between tumor and immune system is interpreted in terms of immunoediting, which includes several processes. Here you can see various types of cells, but it is difficult to grasp once at a time. We know that tumor cells are always there, as well as elimination, and a person can live without any tumor pathology. The second thing is equilibrium. When immune system controls the progression of a tumor, this, which means that tumor cells never proliferate beyond a specific controlled threshold, and therefore there are no, no clinical demonstration of tumor. And the third, third option is when, as a result of immunoselection, the tumor escapes from immune surveillance and therefore proliferates. This process is the most, this is our focus. This slide is well known. I have edited it a little bit here. You can see all cells, all immune cells, so as to understand what happens in the immune system. Our knowledge always expands. Red, in red are suppressor cells and in blue are cytotoxic cells. As we can see that one and the same population includes cells of both types. Here you can see the cells that take part in immune response, in innate immunity, macrophages of the first type, dendrite cells, NKT cells of the first type are responsible for immune response. As for suppressor cells, macrophages of the second type, myeloid cells, neutrophils, second type, uh, plasma cytoid cells, and adaptive immunity, syntactic CD8 cells, T helpers, first type, B lymphocytes, and suppressor action are helpers of second type, regulatory cells, and naturally induced cells. Now let's focus on each of these population. NK cells are responsible for affected innate immunity. They were first described in 1975. They are able to do lysis of target cells without prior sensibilization. They are responsible for protection from viruses and also control the tumor growth and the process of metastasis. Uh, they use several mechanisms, direct perforin development lysis, uh, antibody-dependent cellular cytotoxicity, perforin-independent apoptosis, and non-direct pathway that depends on the secretion, excretion of anti-inflammatory cytokines. This is our data uh, for 
the same one and the same patients, but uh, across different populations. Uh, this is the data for patients with primary cancer fit for surgery. As we see, the count of NK cells and NK activity is increased, and then it evades. As we look at syntactic T cells, which is adaptive, uh, adaptive immunity, their mechanism is well known, dendrit cells CD8A uh, plus and CD103 plus are first activated and then in the lymphatic node, the antigen-specific CD8 cells are activated. Those are activated and then are mi migrate into the tumor node. This is the key prognostic factor for immune therapy. If you look at the same cohort of patients, we see that the count of cytotoxic cells and their potential is quite high. But this means that at the, first, at the initial stages, we cannot identify cytotoxic cells. But they are, their count is quite high. As for suppressors, I would like just first mention them. The first are T regulatory cells. The Western researchers usually name them as regulatory cells. So suppressor cells actually is synonymous to regulatory cells. One type of them is CTLA-4, and you can see what happens in patients. Again, breast cancer, the count of uh, these cells is increased versus uh, the count of these cells in the donor body. Initially, we thought that T regulatory cells cover for everything, but this is not, in fact, the truth. Whether it is good, is it good when uh, we have a high Treg count or not? If the therapy is efficient, the therapy to counter Tregs with the count being high, what we have that pathomorphosis is in patients that had high Treg count. Well, again, in patients with most unfavorable forecast, patients with breast cancer who were through chemotherapy, the two years non-relapse-free survival was identified in patients with higher Treg count. So this means that the general effect depends on the this population. The second group is CD8 plus CD28 minus. This is a very rare population and unique for human beings. As we can see, it increases in patients with tumors. And indeed, in patients, we see that high count of this population is demonstrated at the first and second stages, and then it decreases. With the so the count of CD8 plus CD28 minus decreases, and also the ratio of CD8 plus CD28 plus and CD8 plus CD28 minus T cells. As for NKT cells, this is a unique population. We can stimulate and inhibit anti tumor immunity. Today, we cannot say for sure whether those are one and the same population 
or to different po populations. What we see that this the NKT cell population is increased in patients and a month or one, one month and a half after radical surgery, their count is restored. And again, the count of these cells in patients with disseminated uh, tumors. This po these cells have are, even, are an important prognostic factor in patients with progressive tumors, the count of these cells increases. This slide, I think, is very important to understand our approaches and therapeutic modalities. As we see, the number of suppressor cells is a very individual thing. We, we checked uh, approximately 250 patients with breast cancer, and Treg are responsible for 22 percent of patients, but NKT cells were exposed in the majority of patients, 76.7 percent, which means that we must be very careful about choosing. A specific therapy. As for other suppressors, today we are effectively focused on myeloid suppressor cells. They are generated as a result of various factors and differentiated into tumor associated macrophages and suppressor dendritic cells in tumors. These are the results of a very recent research that evidenced that one of the growth factors in tumors with higher amyloid suppressor cells ensured better survival. And today we have uh, we have specific drugs that. Uh, that act against checkpoint tumors. And macrophages, two types, classically activated, that augment inflammation, and alternative macrophages that suppress inflammation and anti-tumor immunity. And again, we have relevant therapies underway in the pipeline. In oncologic patients, we can have both stimulation of immunotherapy and its suppression. Usually, we used to, in patients of the first, of this third and fourth stages, we can, we usually saw just a very traditional, uh, traditional immunologic profile. Well, the, th well, the thing is that. At the second stage, the cytotoxic and suppressor activity is high, but as a result of inefficient treatment, the suppressor activity uh, suppresses, silences the cytotoxic activity, and then it uh, decreases. Many patients demonstrate expansion of CD8 plus T cells. The majority of patients are free from the destruction of tumor. And I think that this is what we are going to talk today is the microenvironment of tumor, which is highly important for, Im for evasion from immunosurveillance. As we can see, the interaction of these cells can have a very crucial influence. Actually, we, we have three options. The first one of them is the inflammatory scenario.
This is the case when there is a pre-existing immunity and the tumor is infiltrated with lymphocytes. The second scenario is absence of infiltration and immunologic ignorance. It is only here that treatment will be successful, checkpoint treatment, because here we have the targets. It's going to be less efficient in the second scenario and will be almost inefficient in the third scenario. Therefore, our task is to, to find out which cells are there and what would be the proper treatment and to activate this uh, immunologic ignorance. So and today we have specific therapies in the pipeline to render this the, the, this ignorance into activation. And the last slide. These are immunologic biomarkers. So our task is to identify immunologic biomarkers to ensure successful treatment, as well as monitoring of immunologic uh, biomarkers. Thank you. Questions? We have time. Thank you very much. It was highly exciting. In my uh, research center, we study apoptos uh, apoptotic expression of genes in tissues. Uh, at the second stage, in the first and the second stage, we usually see the pro and the contra activation, what we call swings. Am I right to understand that the pro and contra effect is augmented and on the, at the first and second stage and on the third stage there is a pseudo normalization, a false normalization? Yes, indeed, but these are the facts that are clear to us today. Our task today is to go further so as to be able not to evaluate what's going on but also to be able to uh, interfere. If we have some time for discussion, these um, drugs, ipilimubab and so many others, so as to be able to understand which drug is, will be the most, the proper one, we must recognize what's going on in this node. And the second question, could you please give some recommendations? We are doing research in dendritic uh, cellular vaccines. So when, uh, what's the pro most proper scenario to apply these vaccines? Well, this is something that we have, we are doing research too, and we have come up with specific indications for patients. In patients with severe disruption of uh, immune system in the cytotoxic, dimension, those, are, those cannot be subject to uh, dendritic cellular vaccines. So there are some specific criteria indeed, yes. What's your take on uh, memory T cells? Well, memory T cells uh, are very crucial if activated this will augment the immune response, but a different thing is how to activate them.